Yo, what's up guys and welcome back to Boundary Break, the series where I get to show you an exclusive look around your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Outback, Favela and Skyscraper. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you for the huge support that you guys showed on the last video. I'm definitely going to be keeping up this series, so make sure you stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and leave a like down below and let me know what maps you want to see in episode number 3. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now getting straight into it with the first map of the day, Outback, which of course is based in Australia, very close to Ayers Rock or otherwise known as Uluru. Now going into this map, I didn't really know what to expect myself. I'm quite a fan of this map in the game itself, and I know of a couple easter eggs that are around the map, but not much else, so it was going to be quite interesting to have a deeper look. Now the first area I decided to look at was the fuel pump spawn on the south side of the map, and immediately I spotted these cars or vehicles moving along in the distance, which I myself have never actually seen before until now. Now just in front of these vehicles is this giant Charles Fusion sign which of course is an easter egg to one of Ubisoft's other franchises, the Trials series. Now personally I've never played the Trials games myself but I don't think it takes a genius to figure out that those vehicles are linked to that game. As we continue to head on further away from the main part of the map, there are these strange, almost cardboard cutouts of sand dunes layered in the dirt. Now as I kept running, I thought there'd only be a few of these, but there were hundreds and hundreds. I was running for almost 5 minutes I think, and these cutouts kept going further back and further back. Now although the ground on this map does look like the surface of the sun, it is kind of cool to see the level of detail that Ubisoft puts into the backgrounds of their maps. I kept on running to see how far out this would go and I was running for quite a considerable amount of time, longer than I would have expected, until eventually, stranded and with no source of water or food, I collapsed and died. Back over at the fuel pump spawn again, there were a couple of signs that I saw before I headed out the first time that I wanted to check out in a little bit more detail. Now this first one here is quite simple, but this second one over here, I thought it was quite interesting that it said border on the top. Does that mean border is actually in Australia? Probably not. Now good luck trying to make out any of what this says, the only thing that I can understand is where it says Uluru on the second from the bottom row. Now once again as you know I had to test out how far this road would go. I was running for maybe 2 minutes, so not too far, but still quite a distance, until I reached the edge of the map and died. Now as I was spawning in for the next round, I spotted something rather strange. This lone red cube underneath the map. Now I'm no game designer, but I don't see a single reason of why that would be there. If you have any idea why that red cube was there, please let me know. Heading over this time to the north side of the map, outside of the boundaries, and it's here where we get to see up close and personal the famous kangaroos. Now you may have seen these kangaroos yourself whilst playing, because if you look out of the boundaries on the north side you can see them running along. Now these fellas don't do much, they're only 2D PNGs, and you know how much I love 2D PNGs in map design, but they do add a nice little bit of detail and a little bit of life to the outside of the map. Heading further away now to the most significant part of this map, the massive fucking rock. Or as the Australians like to call it, Big fucking rock can, although it does go by a more popular name, Uluru. Now this of course is a famous landmark in Australia. Now I've never been to Australia myself, but I definitely would like to visit it someday. It is quite a massive structure and I was actually surprised myself how big it was. Now you could argue it's not the most interesting thing out here as I did find this floating bush, which I thought was kind of cool. Now it was at that fatal moment when I was exploring underneath the ground where I realised that I had not attached my land harness to the ground and I began to fall into the sun. Back over at the map now by the camping spawn, I found this interesting sign. Now feel free to pause the video here if you want to read the whole thing, but it's just a bit of information about Australia. What I did find kind of funny was this little joke here where it says, not much else really, clearly pointing to the whole of Australia. Now whoever at Ubisoft added that little easter egg slash joke into that, hats off to you. Now with that, let's move on to our next map, Favela. Now this map is of course set in Brazil, and I'm quite fond of this map, just because of the sheer amount of detail that you can see as a normal player just playing the map. The thousands and thousands of houses in this favela is absolutely astonishing, but I'll tell you what I was not expecting to see. Well, I guess you'll find out. 
Now we're going to start off by heading down this street on the southwest corner of the map. Now when you step through the cars, you get this appropriately placed message of you will die in 10 seconds, which of course is what happens to anyone in Brazil when they step outside. But I'll tell you what I absolutely was not expecting. As I went down this street, I was not expecting to find an absolute tropical paradise on the other side of these houses. Now almost immediately I was taken aback by the number of houses that were in front of me. Thousands and thousands of houses, there's probably over a hundred thousand of these houses in the entire map, and that's not even a joke. The absolute level of detail that Ubisoft must have put into this map is commendable. Overall, the whole map looks so much prettier on the outside, which is a shame, because unless you're like me, you won't ever get to see this side of favela. Now unfortunately, because I was so high up in the sky, I wasn't able to get a proper look down below on the beach and the dock that you can see, although I was still able to have quite a good look around this city. From a bit further back you can see Jesus T-posing on everyone, which is pretty pog as my guy, because he's asserting dominance over everyone on Favela. As I kept heading further away, I kept seeing more and more detail, like these mountains that are even further away than the city that I just showed you. Now I don't know whether these mountains are supposed to be the Amazon, but if the Amazon is anything like it is in reality, then this whole mountain should be on fire. Now as I reached the map border, I was expecting to die instantly, but to my surprise, I was able to walk off and even further into the abyss. But there were these weird sun rays coming up from the ground below, and I wasn't quite sure why they were there, but it was a little bit strange to see. Now I kept running to see how much further I could go, but that was until I remembered that I was in Brazil, and swiftly died. Back over to the map again, and I found this cool, like, ski lift thing. I don't know why it's here. I don't know if they actually have these in Brazil, but, um, it's quite a cool detail. If we continue to head further past the ski lift, we can find another city on the other side of the river. Now, I don't know what idiot thought it would be a good idea to build buildings on sand, because it's not very structurally sound. But, you know, they're here, so I guess it's alright. I did have quite a lot of fun exploring through the favelas in between the houses, as it was almost like a bit of a maze. Now I kept going until I reached the underside of the map, and you can get a really good view from underneath of all of these buildings. Now I kept staring and staring, until I realised something. It had been staring me in the face this whole time. Can you see it? It's there. It's always there. It's always been there. No. It can't be true. I've been playing this game for years, and it's always been here, in front of my eyes this whole time. What else is there I don't know? Is everything sus? Am I sus? It's okay. It's okay. I'm a big boy. I'm brave. I can do this. I can do this. <sighs> <clears throat> Moving on to our final map of the episode is Skyscraper. Now once again, before we get into this last map, I do want to say if you have gotten up to this point, a huge thank you to you. I've been working really hard on this series and I'm glad that you guys enjoy it so much. Once again, make sure if there are any maps that you want to see me cover in the future, then leave a comment to let me know. So Skyscraper is one of the few maps in the game to have experienced a rework, so it's going to be quite interesting to have a look around, so let's get into it. Now I thought I'd show you this clip to start off with, because as my drone falls through the map in the central tower, you get quite a good view of all of the buildings and where they are placed in the map. Now starting off on the helipad spawn, you can get a really beautiful view of the city down below, and there's a really beautiful scene through the sunset between the buildings here. Now the first thing that I did want to try is to see if there was a flaw on this map. Now I wasn't expecting much and as I fell through the depths of hell I realised that there was no flaw and the buildings were in fact just floating in the sky. Back over to the helipad spawn and I spotted these two cranes moving in the distance. Now apart from Outback, this is the only map that I can think of that actually has physical moving components in the background of the map and I thought it was quite interesting. Now because Skyscraper is one of the few maps that is actually floating in the sky instead of being on the ground, there's not actually too much you can do in terms of exploring. Now it was fun to have a look around through all of the buildings that make up the city surrounding Skyscraper, but apart from that, there's not really too much else I can show you. Now to finish off this video, I'm going to leave you with this beautiful shot of the map of Skyscraper. I feel like this would make a really beautiful desktop background, so feel free to use it yourself. 
Before we end off, I do want to once again say a massive thank you if you've reached this far in the video, as I really do pour so much effort into making these videos. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, let me know what maps you want to see in episode 3, and I'll see you guys next time.